Welcome back to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers, sorting through lots of Halloween treats. How about gummies? They're a standby on the trick-or-treat streets. They come in many shapes and sizes, including these creepy crawlers. So right now, we're going to go behind the scenes to see how they're made. Um, Gummy glowworms are one of Ferrera Pan Candy's top-selling treats. They make the gummies with lots of gelatin. Blend it in this machine with corn syrup, sugar, and water. Surprisingly, every step is mechanized. The machine does all the measuring. The program will run, and it will say how many pounds of each ingredient. When you hit that amount in the tank, then the valve will close, and the next ingredient will come in. Fully automated. Here they heat the mixture to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Then it's put into a vacuum that cools it and removes much of the moisture. The next step would be to add any of the color, the flavor, the juice before we deposit it. And that's done in this huge machine they call a CFA, or Color Flavor Additive Deck. Now, this is a very critical piece of equipment because it's measuring out precisely how much color, how much flavor, and it's doing it batch after batch after batch so that every time you buy a gummy worm, you're getting the same flavor and the same color in that gummy worm. Now the colored flavored mixture is ready to turn into gummy worms. But most people are shocked to find out how gummies take their shape. The gummy mixture never touches a mold. Instead, it goes into this white stuff, which has been pressed with a mold into a gummy shape. It's a cornstarch with a small percent of mineral oil. And if I wanted to make a gummy hand, I'd flatten it out, press in, and just fill that up with slurry. Cool. The cornstarch is actually a better mold than a metal pan. Plus, it's easier to get the gummies out once they're dry. And we use a piston pump and a nozzle that lines up directly with the mold and injects the liquid candy into the starch. They can fill 28 of these boards a minute, which is a total of 6,720 worms every 60 seconds, or 403,000 an hour, and over nine and a half million a day, just in case you're counting. These boards are taken to a drying room for 18 hours, then put back on the machine to be processed. After the product shakes out of the mold, it goes through a steamer, gets it all sticky, and then it will roll in the sugar acid blend. The sugar acid gives these Black Forest gummies their famous sweet and sour taste, especially popular with the under 12 set. After the product goes through the steamer, it's going to roll in this drum where it's going to get covered with the sugar acid blend that gives us the glowworm and sourness. From here, we'll convey it up, we'll catch it in boards, and send it off to the packaging room. And then all that's left to do is to put them in a package and let kids do the rest. 93% of American children go trick-or-treating, and half of them say they want chocolate. So bring on the M&Ms. Take a look at how these classic candies are made by the millions. It's one of the food world's most well-known slogans. Melts in your mouth, not in your hand. And it goes along with one of the world's most craved candies. M&Ms are definitely a part of American culture, and currently they're in everything from the Academy Awards to New Year's Eve celebrations to NASCAR, pretty much every big special event you can think of, you'll find M&Ms. So aside from the snappy slogan, how did these tiny treats become such a big hit? Well, the story actually starts when candy maker Forrest Mars visited wartime Spain in the late 1930s. He saw soldiers eating chocolate pellets covered with sugar, and it didn't melt. And he was inspired by that idea. By 1941, Mars was churning out his own version of candy-coated chocolate stateside. And he did initially have a partner, which is where the name comes from. The M stands for Forrest Mars Sr. and Bernie Murray, his partner. Today, M&M Mars is making around 1 billion M&Ms every day. To put it in further perspective, if we put all the M&Ms end to end that we make in the course of the year, it would encircle the Earth 48 times. And at their facility in Hackettstown, New Jersey, the 12-hour M&M making process starts with the chocolate. A mix made from milk, sugar, and cocoa first rolls through refiners, turning the semi-liquid paste into powder. 
Then, powder conveys its way down to the conch room, where giant containers filled with metal beads grind up the powder with cocoa butter and chocolate liqueur. The end result? A smooth semi-solid chocolate ready for depositing into tiny bean-shaped sheets. We call it a lentil shape. And we think the lentil shape is the best shape to ensure that the sugar cell is put on in a consistent and even fashion. Now the step of putting on the first coat of candy is top secret. But once the chocolate centers have their first sweet coat on, it's time for them to take a tumble. Here, extra layers of color are shellacked onto the shells. Next, candies get christened with their own little letters. And then all the different colors blend together before being bagged. But this is not a random assortment of sweet colors. A bag of M&Ms contains exactly 25% orange, 25% blue, and 12.5% of brown, red, yellow, and green candies. And different colors do come and go as tastes change over the years. We actually have specialists who are trained in color, and they keep uh, very close to all the color trends and make sure that all our colors stay very current and very contemporary. Licorice, it's been a favorite snack since early history. In fact, huge amounts were even found in King Tut's tomb. Traditionally, licorice meant the use of the licorice root, but today somehow the term has come to encompass what we know as both black and red licorice. And even though the red kind is actually strawberry flavored, we still love it as a licorice treat. Let's just say it's licorice with a twist. Here in the peaceful Pennsylvania countryside, all appears quiet and calm. But there's something very twisted going on. Tons of twirling candy is made at the Twizzler factory, located, of course, on a turn in the road near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This delicious licorice has been around since the 1920s, and throughout history's twists and turns, the Twizzler keeps rolling along. So what makes this candy special? Well, I really do believe that the twist in the Twizzler does make the Twizzler. <laughs> wow, that's a tongue twister. But how do they get that twist into the Twizzler? The candy starts as a basic blend of cornstarch, corn syrup, flour, sugar, and flavorings. This mix is then pushed through these patented nozzles. The way they work is so secret, we'll have to keep our tongues truly tied. But here's the general idea. It twists and twists and twists until the Twizzler comes out just so twisty. Twizzlers are always popular with moviegoers. They don't melt, stick, or spill. And with an average of 20 Twizzlers per package, they're easily shared. So are Twizzlers the main attraction at the concession stand? Twizzlers are second to popcorn. The number one candy sold at the movies. With Twizzlers in such high demand, the factory turns out almost 200 tons a day. If you relay our Twizzlers end to end, you can go from the east coast to the west and start back again. That's a lot of candy. Now, here's a little known Twizzler tidbit. Each licorice stick contains about two and a half curves per inch. On an average, you get 15 twists per Twizzler. So next time you're at the movies, see which has more twists, the latest Hollywood thriller or that familiar tasty Twizzler. Hi everybody, welcome to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers and today we are hitting the candy store to explore the sourest of sweets and treats. In fact, can I buy some of these? All right, now we've discovered there is something strange going on in Roswell, New Mexico. Thank you. And we're not talking UFOs, we're talking explosions of nuclear proportions in your mouth, that is. So let's leave it to a little piece of sour candy called a warhead to pack an amazing wallet. Watch. Ask anyone, what's the sourest hard candy you can get? They'll most likely say, Warheads! Warheads. In fact, its name comes from the notion that its taste is akin to a real warhead going off in your mouth. Even the puckered up mascot, Wally, bears a mushroom cloud above his head. The extreme style of hard candy when it came on the market was a huge success because of the dare factor. It is so sour that kids would dare each other to see how long they could keep it in their mouth. Originally produced in Taiwan, 
The Warhead Launching Pad now sits in Roswell, New Mexico, a town that hosts an annual UFO festival. Today, candy makers and a few extraterrestrials blast out 240 million warheads a year. It all starts with 2,000 pound bags of sugar. We take the sugar along with some water and some corn syrup and we mix it into the tank behind me to come up with our base solution. The solution travels through a cooker and into a surge tank reaching temperatures of 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the moisture is all cooked out, it sort of looks like heavy syrup. The syrup then travels down a pipe into a mixing bowl. And in that mixing bowl, we're adding citric acid, flavor, and color. This batch is blue raspberry. It travels down a conditioning band and around rollers that inject the center with a confectionery powder. There's a little surprise on the inside for everybody. As it continues along, machines form it into a longer, skinnier rope. And finally, a die cutter slices it into tiny warheads and fires them into a cooler. There's just one thing left to do. This is where we add the pucker power. Yep, all its sour power comes from a secret powder sprayed inside a huge coating drum. There are some people that think that the coating that we use might not be from this world, but uh, I have no comment on that. And at a whopping rate of 1,100 warheads a minute, these high-speed wrappers are fit for infinity and beyond. Each bag holds five explosive flavors. Lemon, green apple, watermelon, black cherry, and blue raspberry. And candy makers warn, eating too many just may knock you into another universe. It's everything you can do to keep it in your mouth. Now here's the question. Are you the type that likes to uh, play with your candy? <laughs> Perhaps you would like to wear it. Well, these are nerds ropes and they can be a necklace, perhaps a, uh, a bracelet, or they can be stretched out like that. Now, how do they think of these things and how do they make them? Hmm, let's watch. Call it colorful and crazy, twisty or tasty, Nerds Rope stretch the imagination. Nerds Rope is quite, quite something. It's a gummy center covered in rainbow nerds. It's like a big delicious strand of DNA. Nerds ropes are fairly new, but regular nerds have been around since 1983. The most popular flavors are grape and strawberry. And if you like them tart, they also make sour nerds in flavors like lightning lemon and amped apple. Usually one box of nerds has two flavors, but the nerds rope is like a cluster of five colors and flavors. Grape, orange, lemon, watermelon, and strawberry. It's it's quite an experience. Willy Wonka invited us into his private factory in Itasca, Illinois, where Nerds ropes roll off the conveyor in not feet, but miles. If we were to line up all of our Nerds ropes that we make in one day, end to end, we'd have over 60 miles of Nerds rope. Believe it or not, it's thought this sugary strand came about by accident. The word around the factory is that one day there were a load of Nerds laying around, and somebody was experimenting with some gummies. That mystery inventor apparently dribbled some of the gummy mixture over a pile of nerds, and then he went to lunch. And then when they came back, they discovered this amazing thing. And then they set about how to, how to create this so that lots of people could enjoy it. And they were very successful. <laughs> Before you can have a nerds rope, you have to have nerds. Nerds are just this iconic, amazing candy that have tons of character. I mean, I think when you see them being made, it just, it just blows your mind. More than 150 million of these tiny, crunchy candies coat the ropes each day. Basically, we start off with a sugar crystal, and we just keep coating it with, uh, with more sugar, liquid corn syrup. The sugar spins in pans like this and slowly grows into lots of uniquely shaped nerds. We keep adding sugar on in different layers uh, until we get the full nerd. Check out these naked nerds. This is what they look like before they add color. From the time that we start to the time that we're done, it's about six hours. Meantime, the gummy center cooks with gelatin, sugar, and a special ingredient, citric acid for fruity flavor. We're gonna take this, we'll cook that mixture, 
Um, and that gives us this gummy. This gummy then is formed into the rope. From there, we run it through a shower of a gajillion nerds. This is not a shower of nerds. It's more like a storm. Countless little candies cover the long, sticky red ropes. Then they cut them and cool them down. And within a few minutes, a conveyor leads the finished ropes to a container called a U-board. And that U-board allows us to, to be able to wrap it, uh, so it'll maintain its shape uh, as we send it out. Each rainbow-colored creation slides into a shiny foil wrapper. As for what happens next, well, that's up to whoever opens it. Nerd Rope is just one of those super, super creative candies. I mean, it's just like pure imagination. <laughs> I would say it's a one of a kind, absolutely. So the next time your kids want a colorful candy addition to play dress up, how about a Nerd Rope ring or belt for candy bling? Nerd Ropes make a funny fashion statement and an even better edible accessory.